I can't pay you. My hands are full. Good girl. Ah, good girl. All right, it's like 5 a.m., just got up. Don't get the wrong impression, I have the worst sleep schedule in the entire world, probably. I only get up this early when I absolutely need to. Um, yeah, today I needed to. I gotta drive to Milwaukee, deal with some family stuff, and then I'll pick back up the camera when I get home. I think I'm recording a push workout today or a pull workout, I don't know. I'll probably be more energetic then. I will probably be on a lot of caffeine and not a lot of food, so. I'll probably be energetic for a little bit and then feel like I'm going to pass out. So I'll see you guys then. Look at that sunrise. Nice. Okay, I just got home. I was super tired when I recorded that last clip. And I think I said I'm hitting push today. I'm not. That's a lie. Today's back day, which you guys have been asking for a lot because everyone seems to love my back. And people are always asking how I get my back the way it is. So... Before this back workout, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about how you can grow your back to be more like mine. As I've said before, my back has always been a strong point of mine, like as long as I've been lifting. But that doesn't mean that I don't have good advice to get your back to be more like mine. The first mistake I see a lot of people make when they're trying to grow their back is they just do so many workouts for the back. They'll do like five, six, seven workouts with four to five sets each in one back workout like that's too much you only need like 12 to 16 sets max per full day like per full back day like you need to do three or four workouts max with like four sets max of each of those if you're doing 20 30 sets in one workout like in one day you're just killing your gains you're just overworking yourself and you're not gonna be able to recover in time to repair and build that muscle before your next back day Another mistake I see is not letting it rest. People will want to grow a certain muscle group and they'll hit it every other day or like three times a week. That's too much. Max you can be hitting a muscle in one week is two times per week. If you have testosterone flowing through your body like a 15-year-old boy or a guy on steroids, then sure, hit your muscle three times a week. But for most people, that's not optimal. And if you're a normal human being, you only want to hit that muscle one to two times per week. I think the most important factor in me growing my back to the point that it's at now was developing my muscle connection at an early point in my lifting career. So like I could lat spread two months into working out. That's very, very early to do a lat spread. If you can learn to do a lat spread, not even proper form, if you can just learn to flur out your lats like a lat spread, it will make your back grow so much because you will be able to feel it that much more during your lifts. What I recommend is learn how to do a lat spread and flare your lats and then implement that into your workouts. So like if you're doing a lat pull down, do a lat spread, grab the bar, pull down, squeeze it as hard as you can for 10 seconds with a light weight, and then do a 10 second negative going all the way back up and stretching it and letting your lats fully stretch out. You will feel it so much better than just putting on a heavy weight and pumping out 10, 15, 20 reps. You need to like stay light when you're new to lifting and just go through the motions with good form. You can't just go through the motions just to get it over with or to like impress people with how much weight you can do. You need to get the form down because that's what truly matters the most. To this day, I rarely ever go heavy on lat pull downs because I don't feel the need to. I feel them so well just by getting a perfect contraction. Another mistake I see people making with lat pull downs is they grab the bar and they pull down to like their belly button. You're not even working your back if you're doing that. You're working your back until you get down to about here and then you're just working like your joints. That's horrible. People think that pulling the bar down to their belly button is gonna give them a better workout because it's a longer motion. But in reality, when you're doing a lat pull down, you grab the bar from the top, you should be pulling it to your upper chest. You should never ever have your wrists in front of your elbows while doing a lat pull down. There should be a straight line from your elbow to the cable when you're pulling down. There should be no pushing forward in your wrist. This is hard to explain. When you're doing a lat pull down, picture a straight line from where the cable starts to your elbow when you're going down. There should be a straight line right there and then it should go down to your upper chest. There should be no point where the where the arm and the wire are going in a different direction. The same thing goes for rows, especially like cable rows. Learn to do a lat spread and then grab the bar and then pull it back while doing a lat spread and then squeeze it tight as hard as you can. Hold it for 10 seconds for your first set, 10 second negative, and then just get on with your workout. All you gotta do is learn the mind-muscle connection and learn the form and it will help you so much. 
And if you don't know how to do a last spread yet, there are so many great videos online, especially on TikTok and YouTube, that show you how to do a last spread that I feel like you should watch those. I could try to teach you guys, but I feel like other people just have so much better advice than me on that specific thing because it came really natural to me. So it's kind of one of those things that's harder for me to explain because it came natural to me, if that makes sense. But yeah, learning a last spread in my muscle connection is probably the most important thing you can possibly do to grow your back. And that's why my back is the way it is today is because I got that my muscle connection so early on and it was the first muscle that I actually had that good of my muscle connection with. And that's why it shot up before all the rest of mine. Aside from my muscle connection, another important factor in growing your back is train till failure. This doesn't mean you need to throw on super heavy weights and just pump out 12 to 15 reps or 10 to 12 reps. You need to turn every set except for your warm-up set into a set training till failure. So say you're on your seventh rep with a decently light weight and you're trying to get 12 reps and you're trying to make your 12th rep failure. On your eighth rep then, if it feels like you can go 15 more reps, 20 more reps without being tired, you need to slow it down, pause at the bottom, slow negative on the way up, then your ninth rep, 10th rep, same thing. And then if you don't feel like you're getting tired enough yet, hold it even longer. You might feel like you can do 20 more reps, make those last two reps the hardest reps of your life. Pull down, squeeze as hard as you possibly can, and then slow down, do a slow, slow negative, stretch it out really good. Last rep, make it failure. Make it to the point where you can't do any more reps because I promise you, it will work. Say I was trying to bench press and grow my chest. I could pump out one plate for 40 reps, or I can fail at 10 reps if I just go super slow, pause it, long hold, and then push back up. By my 10th rep, if I do that every single rep, I'm going to be tired or I could just pump it out super fast for 40 reps and it's not going to work as well. It might look cool to other people in the gym, but that's not what you're going for at the end of the day. You can try to look cool all you want. Nobody's going to think it's cool. When I see people benching 30 reps and just pumping it out, I think they look stupid. Same thing with back workouts, everything. It looks, it looks dumb. My final last tip right now for growing your back is check out Damian Patrick on YouTube. Look him up. Damian Patrick. I followed so many of his workouts when I got into lifting because he has such an amazing layout for them. He has different series. He has like a 101 series, 100 series, a 102, 103, 104, 105 for the level of difficulty and experience that you're at. So like say you're brand new to the gym, go to his level 100 or his 101 series and follow those workouts. They're such amazing workouts and you're really going to feel them very, very well. And they're very straight to the point. So check out Damian Patrick. He has great, great workouts.
so the workout's over pretty good lift um i got a decent back pump uh i didn't get i didn't have time to do biceps at the end though which i was planning on doing mostly because every single dumbbell was taken in the gym right now this place is packed for no reason tonight but yeah overall decent workout didn't even get to take the pump cover off at all because I'm so crunched on time but i'll go home and pose a little bit oh yeah that was a very lat dominant workout i did like no rows at all I'll go through a full better back day for you guys soon and like actually like explain what I'm doing in sets and reps and everything. But for now though, I was just hitting a quick, like getting a quick lat pump today. So I literally only did lat workouts and a little bit of rear delts.